Well, there are a whole bunch of factors that go into a great paint job. One is obviously the equipment. Here we've got a state-of-the-art downdraft uh, spray bake Gen 4 system. We've got a great bake cycle in this thing. We've got a great mixing room. We've got great dryers outside. Now this car here, after we did all the body work, we got it into the polysurfacer and then into the final primer, what we had to do is spend a fair bit of time blocking again with 320. Spend hours and hours blocking 320. That gets all of the fine scratches out of it. Then what we do is we go to 600 wet and then to 800 wet grit paper. This is going a metallic color, so if you go metallics, you want to have the really fine surface on the end. And if you look down the side of this, you can almost see it shining. You could almost buff this up if or paint and have it come out pretty nice. The second thing we spend a lot of time with is masking off the car. Even though we have a state-of-the-art downdraft spray booth here, 95% of the dirt that gets into a paint job comes from either the car or from the painter himself. So what we do is we, we mask everything off here. We spend hours and hours. You can blow it out as many times as you like. You're still going to get some fine particles of dirt that as you go over it with the spray gun, it's going to get blown out onto the top surface and that dirt is going to stay in the paint. So we've bagged everything off here. The next step is to do a final inspection over the car. Make sure all the edges have some primer on it and then do a final degreasing which takes any imperfections off the material, the, the body material itself. If I touch this right now with my hands, there's grease on my hands, there's oil on my hands that'll contaminate the paint. You'll actually see a fingerprint, might come out six months later, might come out six years later, but that oil is trapped underneath the paint. The last thing you do is use a tack rag and then you're ready to spray. Now that the base coat is pretty much finished, we do one final inspection. The thing that I'll insist my guys do is use a trouble light. And it'll show any of the areas that haven't been totally covered. And you can see one spot in here that there's a little bit of coverage missing. The other thing we're looking for is to make sure the metallic is nice and even. He'll go around with the trouble light, make sure it's 100%. It's worth the extra coat of paint now to have it perfect. The next thing we'll do is we'll add the clear, we'll add four coats. The next step after that is to actually bag off the entire car and get ready for all the detail work. Well, once the body's painted, that's only half the job. Now what we have to do is do all the parts. We have to do the hood, we have to do the doors, the valance, all the headlights around. A whole bunch of pieces are hung up in the booth and you want to be careful that you get all those pieces in at once, if you can, to keep the metallic nice and even. As these cars went down the assembly line, this is what we're trying to duplicate. The cars were primed, so you got a little bit of overspray onto the floor pans. Then what would happen is the cars got painted. As the cars got painted, again, you had a little overspray just on the edges of the floor pans. The rest of the floor pans were still raw fiberglass from the factory. So that's what we've duplicated here. We've actually sprayed a little of the overspray onto the floor pans, and then what happens is you get the blackout process in the engine bay. Obviously, they're not raw fiberglass after they leave the factory. So what they do is they mask off the body and they spray all the black in the engine bay and they kind of mist it into the tranny tunnel and into the footwells here. And you can also see the original markings that we found when this car came apart, we've duplicated them as well. If you look at all the clips and things in here, when the car went down the assembly line, these clips were painted black and then they were riveted on. Now, we're not going to remove all of the rivets on this car, so what we did is we hand painted all of the clips and then hand painted all of the rivets to, to duplicate that original look. Now once the cars got put together, body onto chassis and everything together, there was actually a blackout procedure that GM did and they randomly sprayed underneath the car trying to make the whole thing look kind of black. Now because Larry wants this car to sort of be above and beyond, and if you want even maybe even an over-restored car, we're going to be very careful with the blackout procedure not to mess up some of the nice detail work that's happened on this car. And if somebody wants to show it later, make it an NCRS car, they've got to change a few things but they can always go under there and do that blackout procedure at any time. It's not like we're, we're doing something that can't be fixed later. 